Matt Bradley in Tel Aviv, I thank you so very much. So, Admiral, let's kind of go into this a little bit. What we know, sure. and it's, again, just happening a little over an hour ago that we've been starting to get the information in. Let's start with this 52-year-old man who was rescued in southern Gaza in the tunnels. What's your interpretation of what that looked like? Well, kudos to the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, these kind of operations are very, very difficult. I've conducted a couple of them. In fact, Jose, in an area you and I both know well, in Colombia, uh, helping rescue American hostages who were held there for a period of years by the FARC. Um, the risks are to the hostage himself or herself, as well as, as Matt mentioned, to the potential for collateral damage, civilians who are in the vicinity. That in and of itself makes any rescue attempt very difficult. Now let's add degree of difficulty 9.9, .9, which is doing it inside tunnels in closely guarded areas. So this is a complex, delicate operation. Hats off to the Israelis. Final thought here, by the way, this particular hostage is an Arab. Israeli. It shows the Israelis will go after um, all of their citizens wherever they are. You know, it's uh, 320 days since these hostages were taken, 320 days since the massacre inside Israel. More than 1,100 people killed there. Just wondering, uh, Admiral, how does the on the one side military operational uh, readiness and planning to get the hostages that they can find how does that affect or aid the negotiations to get them out via diplomatically uh, exactly the right question to be asking and um, i would argue that um, every successful hostage rescue, and now the Israelis have brought out a handful, a very small number, obviously, but every time they do that, it actually puts pressure on Hamas because they say to themselves, the terrorist organization Hamas, hmm, the Israelis are showing capability to do this. Perhaps we ought to come to the ceasefire table in a serious way and negotiate. Let's hope that's how this plays out, Jose. But I am concerned as the negotiators come together again in Cairo that um, the strikes you mentioned up front in northern Israel, southern Lebanon, that's what will have a chilling effect on these negotiations if we continue to see the tit for tat back and forth across that border. <clears throat> And I don't know, Admiral, if this operation that successfully rescued someone from the tunnels in southern Gaza may also be a message to Hamas leadership that apparently is in tunnels in southern Gaza. Very much so. And if you are uh, Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, and you watched um, the assassination of your organization's leader in the heart of Tehran during an inauguration. Uh, chalk that one up to exquisite intelligence on the part of the Israelis and deep strike capability. Now you're watching the Israelis penetrate your tunnel system, take away one of the crown jewels, your hostages that you're holding. Um, Sinwar has got to be concerned about that ticking clock of Israeli revenge, which I think ultimately will find him, whether he's in a tunnel or not. Admiral James Stavridis, always a pleasure to see you. I thank you very much for being with us this morning. Thanks, Jose.